English Channel, the English Channel, the Sleeve, Sleeve Channel, Sea of Brittany, British Sea, the Channel, also called simply the Channel, is the body of water that separates southern England from northern France and links the southern part of the North Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. It is the busiest shipping area in the world. It is about long and varies in width from at its widest to in the Strait of Dover. It is the smallest of the shallow seas around the continental shelf of Europe, covering an area of some. Until the 18th century, the English Channel had no fixed name either in English or in French. It was never defined as a political border, and the names were more or less descriptive. It was not considered as the property of a nation. Before the development of the modern nations, British scholars very often referred to what as Gaulish, Gallicum in Latin, and French scholars as British or English. The name English Channel has been widely used since the early 18th century, possibly originating from the designation in Dutch sea maps from the 16th century onwards. In modern Dutch, however, it is known as, with no reference to the word English. Later, it has also been known as the British Channel or the British Sea. It was called by the 2nd century geographer Ptolemy. The same name is used on an Italian map of about 1450, which gives the alternative name of possibly the first recorded use of the channel designation. The Anglo-Saxon texts often call it South Sea, South Sea, as opposed to North Sea, North Sea equals Bristol Channel. The common word channel was first recorded in Middle English in the 13th century and was borrowed from Old French Chanel, variant form of Chanel Canal. The French name has been in use since at least the 17th century. The name is usually said to refer to the channel's sleeve, Shape. Folk etymology has derived it from a Celtic word meaning channel that is also the source of the name for the Minch in Scotland, but this name was never mentioned before the 17th century, and French and British sources of that time are perfectly clear about its etymology. The name in Breton, More Bres, means Breton Sea, and its Cornish name, More Bretanac, means British Sea. The International Hydrographic Organization defines the limits of the English Channel as follows The IHO defines the southwestern limit of the North Sea as a line joining the Wild Lighthouse, France, 1 degree and 55 minutes east, and Leathercote Point, England, 51 degrees and 10 minutes north, the Wild Lighthouse is 6 kilometers east of Calais, and Leathercote Point is at the north end of St. Margaret's Bay, Kent. The Strait of Dover, French, Pas de Calais at the channel's eastern end, is its narrowest point, while its widest point lies between Lime Bay and the Gulf of St. Malo, near its midpoint. It is relatively shallow, with an average depth of about at its widest part, reducing to a depth of about between Dover and Calais. Eastwards from there the adjoining North Sea reduces to about in the broad fourteens where it lies over the watershed of the former land bridge between East Anglia and the Low Countries. It reaches a maximum depth of in the submerged valley of Herds Deep, west-northwest of Guernsey. The eastern region along the French coast between Cherbourg and the mouth of the Seine River at Le Havre is frequently referred to as the Bay of the Seine. There are several major islands in the Channel, the most notable being the Isle of Wight off the English coast, and the Channel Islands, British Crown dependencies off the coast of France. The coastline, particularly on the French shore, is deeply indented, several small islands close to the coastline, including Chosy and Mont Saint-Michel, are within French jurisdiction. The Cotentin Peninsula in France juts out into the channel, whilst on the English side there is a small parallel strait known as the Solent between the Isle of Wight and the mainland. The Celtic Sea is to the west of the channel. The channel acts as a funnel that amplifies the tidal range from less than a meter as observed at sea to more than six meters as observed in the Channel Islands, the west coast of the Cotentin Peninsula and the north coast of Brittany. The time difference of about six hours between high water at the eastern and western limits of the channel is indicative of the tidal range being amplified further by resonance. In the UK shipping forecast the channel is divided into the following areas, from the east. The channel is of geologically recent origin, having been dry land for most of the Pleistocene period. Before the Devensian glaciation, the most recent glacial period, which ended around 10,000 years ago, Britain and Ireland were part of continental Europe, linked by an unbroken wheel d'Artois anticline, a ridge that acted as a natural dam holding back a large freshwater proglacial lake in the Dogger Land region, now submerged under the North Sea. During this period, the North Sea and almost all of the British Isles were covered by ice. The lake was fed by meltwater from the Baltic and from the Caledonian and Scandinavian ice sheets that joined to the north, blocking its exit. The sea level was about lower than it is today. Then, between 450,000 and 180,000 years ago, 
at least two catastrophic glacial lake outburst floods breached the Wheel d'Artwa anticline. The first flood would have lasted for several months, releasing as much as 1 million cubic meters of water per second. Out the flood started with large but localized waterfalls over the ridge, which excavated depressions now known as the Fossdangard. The flow eroded the retaining ridge, causing the rock dam to fail and releasing lake water into the Atlantic. After multiple episodes of changing sea level, during which the Fossdangard were largely infilled by various layers of sediment, another catastrophic flood carved a large bedrock floored valley, the Loberg Channel, some 500 meters wide and 25 meters deep, from the southern North Sea Basin through the center of the Straits of Dover and into the English Channel. It left streamlined islands, longitudinal erosional grooves, and other features characteristic of catastrophic mega flood events, still present on the seafloor and now revealed by high resolution sonar. Through the scoured channel passed a river, which drained the combined Rhine and Thames westwards to the Atlantic. The flooding destroyed the ridge that connected Britain to continental Europe, although a land connection across the southern North Sea would have existed intermittently at later times when periods of glaciation resulted in lowering of sea levels. At the end of the last glacial period, rising sea levels finally severed blast land connection. As a busy shipping lane, the channel experiences environmental problems following accidents involving ships with toxic cargo and oil spills. Indeed, over 40% of the UK incidents threatening pollution occur in or very near the channel. One of the recent occurrences was the MSC Napoli, which on January 18, 2007 was beached with nearly 1,700 tons of dangerous cargo in Lime Bay, a protected World Heritage Site coastline. The ship had been damaged and was en route to Portland Harbour. The channel, which delayed human reoccupation of Great Britain for more than 100,000 years, has in historic times been both an easy entry for seafaring people and a key natural defense, halting invading armies while in conjunction with control of the North Sea allowing Britain to blockade the continent. The most significant failed invasion threats came when the Dutch and Belgian ports were held by a major continental power, for example from the Spanish Armada in 1588, Napoleon during the Napoleonic Wars, and Nazi Germany during World War II. Successful invasions include the Roman conquest of Britain and the Norman conquest in 1066, while the concentration of excellent harbors in the Western Channel on Britain's south coast made possible the largest invasion of all time, the Normandy landings in 1944. Channel naval battles include the Battle of the Downs, 1639, Battle of Goodwin Sands, 1652, the Battle of Portland, 1653, the Battle of La Hague, 1692, and the engagement between USS Kearsarge and CSS Alabama, 1864. In more peaceful times the channel served as a link joining shared cultures and political structures, particularly the huge Angevin Empire from 1135 to 1217. For nearly a thousand years, the channel also provided a link between the modern Celtic regions and languages of Cornwall and Britain. E. Brittany was founded by Britons who fled Cornwall and Devon after Anglo-Saxon encroachment. In Brittany, there is a region known as Cornuale, Cornwall and French in Kernef and Breton in ancient times there was also a Domnonia, Devon, in Brittany as well. In February 1684, ice formed on the sea in a belt wide off the coast of Kent and wide on the French side. Remnants of a Mesolithic boatyard have been found on the Isle of Wight. Wheat was traded across the channel about 8,000 years ago. Sophisticated social networks link the Neolithic front in southern Europe to the Mesolithic peoples of northern Europe. The Faraby boats, Hansen log boats and the later Dover Bronze Age boat could carry a substantial cross-channel cargo. Diodorus Siculus and Pliny both suggest trade between the rebel Celtic tribes of Armorica and Iron Age Britain flourished. In 55 BC Julius Caesar invaded, claiming that the Britons had aided the Veneti against him the previous year. He was more successful in 54 BC. But Britain was not fully established as part of the Roman Empire until completion of the invasion by Aulus Plautius in 43 AD. A brisk and regular trade began between ports in Roman Gaul and those in Britain. This traffic continued until the end of Roman rule in Britain in 410 AD, after which the early Anglo-Saxons left less clear historical records. In the power vacuum left by the retreating Romans, the Germanic Angles, Saxons, and Jutes began the next great migration across the North Sea. Having already been used as mercenaries in Britain by the Romans, many people from these tribes crossed during the migration period, conquering and perhaps displacing the native Celtic populations.
Vikings. The attack on Lindisfarne in 793 is generally considered the beginning of the Viking Age. For the next 250 years the Scandinavian raiders of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark dominated the North Sea, raiding monasteries, homes, and towns along the coast and along the rivers that ran England down according to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle they began to settle in Britain in 851. They continued to settle in the British Isles and the continent until around 1050. The fiefdom of Normandy was created for the Viking leader Rollo, also known as Robert of Normandy. Rollo had besieged Paris but in 911 entered vassalage to the King of the West Franks Charles the Simple through the Treaty of Street Clair Surept. In exchange for his homage and fealty, Rollo legally gained a territory he and his Viking allies had previously conquered. The name Normandy reflects Rollo's Viking, i.e. Northmen origins. The descendants of Rollo and his followers adopted the local Gallo-Romance language and intermarried with the area's inhabitants and became the Normans a Norman-French-speaking mixture of Scandinavians, Hiberno-Norse, Orcadians, Anglo-Danish, and indigenous Franks and Gauls. Rollo's descendant William, Duke of Normandy became King of England in 1066 in the Norman conquest beginning with the Battle of Hastings, while retaining the fiefdom of Normandy for himself and his descendants. In 1204, during the reign of King John, mainland Normandy was taken from England by France under Philip II, while insular Normandy, the Channel Islands, remained under English control. In 1259, Henry III of England recognized the legality of French possession of mainland Normandy under the Treaty of Paris. His successors, however, often fought to regain control of mainland Normandy. With the rise of William the Conqueror the North Sea and Channel began to lose some of their importance. The New Order oriented most of England and Scandinavia straight south, toward the Mediterranean and the Orient. Although the British surrendered claims to mainland Normandy and other French possessions in 1801, the monarch of the United Kingdom retains the title Duke of Normandy in respect to the Channel Islands. The Channel Islands, except for Chosy, are crown dependencies of the British crown. Thus the loyal toast in the Channel Islands is Lorraine, Notre Dame, the Queen, our Duke. The British monarch is understood to not be the Duke of Normandy in regards of the French region of Normandy described herein, by virtue of the Treaty of Paris of 1259, the surrender of French possessions in 1801, and the belief that the rights of succession to that title are subject to Salic law which excludes inheritance through female heirs. French Normandy was occupied by English forces during the Hundred Years' War in 1346-1360 and again in 1415-1450. From the reign of Elizabeth I, English foreign policy concentrated on preventing invasion across the Channel by ensuring no major European power controlled the potential Dutch and Flemish invasion ports. Her climb to the preeminent sea power of the world began in 1588 as the attempted invasion of the Spanish Armada was defeated by the combination of outstanding naval tactics by the English and the Dutch under command of Charles Howard, 1st Earl of Nottingham with Sir Francis Drake 2nd in command, and the following stormy weather. Over the centuries the Royal Navy slowly grew to be the most powerful in the world. The building of the British Empire was possible only because the Royal Navy eventually managed to exercise unquestioned control over the seas around Europe, especially the Channel and the North Sea. During the Seven Years' War, France attempted to launch an invasion of Britain. To achieve this France needed to gain control of the Channel for several weeks, but was thwarted following the British naval victory at the Battle of Quiberon Bay in 1759. Another significant challenge to British domination of the seas came during the Napoleonic Wars. The Battle of Trafalgar took place off the coast of Spain against a combined French and Spanish fleet and was won by Admiral Horatio Nelson, ending Napoleon's plans for a cross-channel invasion and securing British dominance of the seas for over a century. The exceptional strategic importance of the channel as a tool for blockade was recognized by the first sea lord Admiral Fisher in the years before World War I. Five keys lock up the world. Singapore, the Cape, Alexandria, Gibraltar, Dover. However, on July 25, 1909 Louis Bleriot made the first channel crossing from Calais to Dover in an airplane. Bleriot's crossing signaled the end of the channel as a barrier mode for England against foreign enemies. Because the Kaiser Liche Marine surface fleet could not match the British Grand Fleet, the Germans developed submarine warfare, which was to become a far greater threat to Britain. The Dover Patrol was set up just before the war started to escort cross-channel troop ships and to prevent submarines from sailing in the channel, obliging them to travel to the Atlantic via the much longer route around Scotland. 
land. On land, the German army attempted to capture channel ports in the race to the sea but although the trenches are often said to have stretched from the frontier of Switzerland to the English Channel, they reached the coast at the North Sea. Much of the British war effort in Flanders was a bloody but successful strategy to prevent the Germans reaching the Channel coast. At the outset of the war, an attempt was made to block the path of U-boats through the Dover Strait with naval minefields. By February 1915, this had been augmented by a stretch of light steel netting called the Dover Barrage, which it was hoped would ensnare submerged submarines. After initial success, the Germans learned how to pass through the barrage, aided by the unreliability of British mines. On January 31, 1917, the Germans restarted unrestricted submarine warfare leading to Dear Admiralty predictions that submarines would defeat Britain by November, the most dangerous situation Britain faced in either World War. The Battle of Passchendaele in 1917 was fought to reduce the threat by capturing the submarine bases on the Belgian coast, though it was the introduction of convoys and not capture of the bases that averted defeat. In April 1918 the Dover Patrol carried out the Zeebrugge raid against the U-boat bases. During 1917, the Dover Barrage was recited with improved mines and more effective nets, aided by regular patrols by small warships equipped with powerful searchlights. A German attack on these vessels resulted in the Battle of Dover Strait in 1917. A much more ambitious attempt to improve the barrage, by installing eight massive concrete towers across the strait was called the Admiralty MN scheme but only two towers were nearing completion at the end of the war and the project was abandoned. The naval blockade in the Channel in North Sea was one of the decisive factors in the German defeat in 1918. During the Second World War, Naval activity in the European theater was primarily limited to the Atlantic. During the Battle of France in May 1940, the German forces succeeded in capturing both Boulogne and Calais, thereby threatening the line of retreat for the British expeditionary force. By a combination of hard fighting and German indecision, the port of Dunkirk was kept open, allowing 338,000 Allied troops to be evacuated in Operation Dynamo. More than 11,000 were evacuated from Le Havre during Operation Cycle, and a further 192,000 were evacuated from ports further down the coast in Operation Ariel in June 1940. The early stages of the Battle of Britain featured air attacks on Channel shipping and ports, and until the Normandy landings, with the exception of the Channel Dash, the narrow waters were too dangerous for major warships. Despite these early successes against shipping, the Germans did not win the air supremacy necessary for Operation Sea Lion, the projected cross-channel invasion. The Channel subsequently became the stage for an intensive coastal war, featuring submarines, minesweepers, and fast attack craft. Dieppe was the site of an ill-fated Dieppe raid by Canadian and British armed forces. More successful was the later Operation Overlord, D-Day, a massive invasion of German-occupied France by Allied troops. Caen, Cherbourg, Carrington, Falaise and other Norman towns endured many casualties in the fight for the province, which continued until the closing of the so-called Falaise Gap between Chambois and Montormel, then liberation of Le Havre. The Channel Islands were the only part of the British Commonwealth occupied by Germany, excepting the part of Egypt occupied by the Africa Corps at the time of the Second Battle of El Alamein, which was a protectorate and not part of the Commonwealth. The German occupation of 1940-1945 was harsh, with some island residents being taken for slave labor on the continent, native Jews sent to concentration camps, partisan resistance and retribution, accusations of collaboration, and slave labor primarily Russians and Eastern Europeans, being brought to the islands to build fortifications. The Royal Navy blockaded the islands from time to time, particularly following the liberation of mainland Normandy in 1944. Intense negotiations resulted in some Red Cross humanitarian aid, but there was considerable hunger and privation during the occupation, particularly in the final months, when the population was close to starvation. The German troops on the island surrendered on May 9, 1945 a day after the final surrender in mainland Europe. The English Channel coast is far more densely populated on the English shore. The most significant towns and cities along both the English and French sides off the Channel, each with more than 20,000 inhabitants, ranked in descending order, populations are the urban area populations from the 1999 French Census, 2001 UK Census, and 2001 Jersey Census, are as follows. The two dominant cultures are English on the north shore of the Channel, French on the south. However, there are also a number of minority languages that are or were found on the shores and islands of the English Channel, which are listed here, with the Channel's name following them.
Dutch previously had a larger range, and extended into parts of modern-day France. For more information, please see French Flemish. Most other languages tend towards variants of the French and English forms, but notably Welsh has more on The channel has traffic on both the UK Europe and North Sea Atlantic routes, and is the world's busiest seaway, with over 500 ships per day out following an accident in January 1971 and a series of disastrous collisions with wreckage in February. The Dover TSS the world's first radar-controlled traffic separation scheme was set up by the International Maritime Organization. The scheme mandates that vessels traveling north must use the French side, traveling south the English side. There is a separation zone between the two lanes. In December 2002 the MV Tricolor, carrying 30 million pounds of luxury cars sank northwest of Dunkirk after collision in fog with the container ship Kariba. The cargo ship Nicola ran into the wreckage the next day. There was no loss of life. The shore-based long-range traffic control system was updated in 2003 and there is a series of traffic separation systems in operation. Though the system is inherently incapable of reaching the levels of safety obtained from aviation systems such as the traffic collision avoidance system, it has reduced accidents to one or two per year. Marine GPS systems allow ships to be pre-programmed to follow navigational channels accurately and automatically, further avoiding risk of running aground. But following the fatal collision between Dutch Aquamarine and Ash in October 2001, Britain's Marine Accident Investigation Branch, MAIB, issued a safety bulletin saying it believed that in these most unusual circumstances GPS use had actually contributed to the collision. The ships were maintaining a very precise automated course, one directly behind the other, rather than making use of the full width of the traffic lanes as a human navigator would. A combination of radar difficulties in monitoring areas near cliffs, a failure of a CCTV system, incorrect operation of the anchor, the inability of the crew to follow standard procedures of using a GPS to provide early warning of the ship dragging the anchor and reluctance to admit the mistake and start the engine led to them be willy running aground in Cawsand Bay, Cornwall in January 2002. The MAB report makes it clear that the harbor controllers were informed of impending disaster by shore observers before the crew were themselves aware. The village of Kingsand was evacuated for three days because of the risk of explosion, and the ship was stranded for 11 days. The number of ferry routes crossing the Strait of Dover has reduced since the Channel Tunnel opened. Current cross-channel ferry routes are Many travelers cross beneath the channel using the Channel Tunnel first proposed in the early 19th century and finally opened in 1994, connecting the UK and France by rail. It is now routine to travel between Paris or Brussels and London on the Eurostar train. Freight trains also use the tunnel. Cars, coaches and lorries are carried on Eurotunnel shuttle trains between Folkestone and Calais. The coastal resorts of the Channel, such as Brighton and Deauville, inaugurated an era of aristocratic tourism in the early 19th century which developed into the seaside tourism that has shaped resorts around the world. Short trips across the channel for leisure purposes are often referred to as channel hopping. As one of the narrowest and most well-known international waterways lacking dangerous currents, the channel has been the first objective of numerous innovative sea, air, and human-powered crossing technologies. Prehistoric people sailed from the mainland to England for millennia. At the end of the last ice age, lower sea levels even permitted walking across. Pierre Andriel crossed the English Channel aboard the Elise, ex the Scottish P.S. Marjorie in March 1816, one of the earliest seagoing voyages by steamship. The paddle steamer Defiance, Captain William Wager, was the first steamer to cross the Channel to Holland, arriving there on May 9, 1816. On June 10, 1821, English built paddle steamer Rob Roy was the first passenger ferry to cross Channel. The steamer was purchased subsequently by the French Postal Administration and renamed Henri IV and put into regular passenger service a year later. It was able to make the journey across the Straits of Dover in around three hours. In June 1843, because of difficulties with Dover Harbour, the Southeastern Railway Company developed the boulogne sur mer Folkestone route as an alternative aid to Calais Dover. The first ferry crossed under the command of Captain Hayward. In 1974 a Welsh coracle piloted by Bernard Thomas of Lecrid crossed the English Channel to France in 13 and a half hours. The journey was undertaken to demonstrate how the bull boats of the Mondan Indians of North Dakota could have been copied from coracles introduced by Prince Maddock in the 12th century. The Mountbatten-class hovercraft, MCH, entered commercial service in August 1968, 
initially between Dover and Boulogne but later also Ramsgate, Pegwell Bay, to Calais. The journey time Dover to Boulogne was roughly 35 minutes, with six trips per day at peak times. The fastest crossing of the English Channel via commercial car-carrying hovercraft was 22 minutes, recorded by the Princess Anne MCHSRN 4 MK3 on September 14, 1995. The first aircraft to cross the channel was a balloon in 1785, piloted by Jean-Pierre François Blanchard, France, and John Jeffries, U.S. Louis Blériot, France, piloted the first airplane to cross in 1909. The sport of channel swimming traces its origins to the latter part of the 19th century when Captain Matthew Webb made the first observed and unassisted head swim across the Strait of Dover swimming from England to France on 24 August 25, 1875 in 21 hours 45 minutes. In 1927, at a time when fewer than 10 swimmers, including the first woman, Gertrude Etterly in 1926, had managed to emulate the feat and many dubious claims were being made, the Channel Swimming Association, CSA, was founded to authenticate and ratify swimmers' claims to have swum the Channel and to verify crossing times. The CSA was dissolved in 1999 and was succeeded by two separate organizations, CSA, Limited, and the Channel Swimming and Piloting Federation, CSPF. Both observe and authenticate cross-channel swims in the Strait of Dover. The Channel Crossing Association was set up at about this time to cater for unorthodox crossings. The team with the most number of channel swims to its credit is the Serpentine Swimming Club in London, followed by the International Sri Chinmoy Marathon team. By the end of 2005, 811 people had completed 1,185 verified crossings under the rules of the CSA, the CSA, Limited, the CSPF and Butlins. The number of swims conducted under and ratified by the Channel Swimming Association to 2005 was 982 by 665 people. This includes 24 two-way crossings and three three-way crossings. The number of ratified swims to 2004 was 948 by 675 people, 456 men, 214 women. There have been 16 two-way crossings, 9 by men and 7 by women. There have been 3 three-way crossings, 2 by men and 1 by a woman. It is unclear whether this last set of data is comprehensive or CSA only. The Strait of Dover is the busiest stretch of water in the world. It is governed by international law as described in unorthodox crossing of the Dover Strait Traffic Separation Scheme. It states, in exceptional cases the French maritime authorities may grant authority for unorthodox craft to cross French territorial waters within the traffic separation scheme when these craft set off from the British coast, on condition that the request for authorization is sent to theme with the opinion of the British maritime authorities. The CCA, CSA and CS and PF are the organizations escorting channel swims, because their pilots have the experience, qualifications, and equipment to guarantee safety of the swimmers they escort. The fastest verified swim of the channel was by the Australian Trent Grimsey on September 8, 2012, in 6 hours 55 minutes, beating the previous record set in 2007 by Bulgarian swimmer Peter Stoichev. There may have been some unreported swims of the channel by people intent on entering Britain in circumvention of immigration controls. A failed attempt to cross the channel by two Syrian refugees in October 2014 only came to light when their bodies were later discovered on the shores of the North Sea in Norway and the Netherlands. On September 16, 1965, two amphicars crossed from Dover to Calais. On December 28, 2018 the UK Home Secretary declared a major incident regarding refugees attempting to cross the channel. This followed a surge in such incidents in November and December of 2018. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.